Okay, hello everybody. So this is an overview of the ecosystems topic. So, so far we've covered food chains and food webs. So we're gonna have a look at energy. Now, of course, all energy in a food chain originally comes from the sun. So the sun is providing energy through light for photosynthesis for the plant, the producer, the energy is then transferred to the consumer, in this case, the rabbit. And then the energy is transferred onto the predator, the carnivore, in this case, the fox. Remember the arrows show energy flow. So generally in a food chain, energy is flowing from left to right, from the plants to the animals. In a food web, it's generally flowing from the plants to the animals upwards. But the key thing is not all the energy is passed on. Say that if the rabbit's got a thousand joules of energy, a thousand joules of energy is not going to be passed on to the fox when the fox eats it, because the rabbit's going to use some of that energy up in its daily activities and its life. Little physics pointer. Remember the unit of energy is the joule, which is a J, or a KJ, which is the kilojoule. So a kilojoule has a thousand joules. Now, the rabbit through its daily life is going to move around looking for food, escape, trying to escape the fox, trying to find a mate, finding shelter. So that's going to take up energy. It's going to try to keep warm because it's a mammal. That's going to use up energy as well. It's going to pass out waste, which is um, feces or urine. So that's going to use up some of the energy as well. Um, it's also going to use some of the energy in terms of growth, new tissues, muscle. Now it's that which actually is passed on to the fox. So when the fox eats the rabbit, the energy that was stored in this new tissue can be passed on. So for that thousand joules we talked about before, if we take away these pointers, these facts here, we might only be left with 200 joules. So if the original thousand joules only 200 joules is being passed on to the actual fox. So in a, in a later video, we'll look at how to calculate efficiency of this process. So this is a little bit like an energy transfer diagram you use in physics. Okay, thank you.